Hey, <laughs> it's you. Anyway, um, hi guys, welcome back to Creep Science by Twitch. This is going to be, be my break piece, which means I'm working on something bigger, these ones, um, but because of all the sanding and scraping, which is now done, my hands are absolutely buggered and I need to give them a break, so I'm doing something simple. Famous last words. Uh, whilst you're having a gander at that, um, as I announced on my social media pages, I am no longer brand ambassador for Carts and Millie. And anyone who saw that video, yes, it looked like I'd been crying and it looks like I've been crying again, but it is just hay fever. Never usually had an issue with it before, but apparently as I'm getting older, I am getting hay fever. Um, so I'm fine, and it's probably why I sound all snuffly as well. Um, but yeah, I'm fine. You will still see me using Cartsamelli products. I still have Cartsamelli products on my shelf to use, and I'll still be buying Cartsamelli products. It's just the difference is I'm not getting them for free, and I won't be getting paid commission, and that's basically it. So it's all gravy. I'm going to stop being a goober. And I'm going to drink my coffee and get started on this. Alright, so I'm not planning on removing the runners I'm just going to give them a really good clean but this one is loose and if you have a close look it's because the hole on it has you know been worn too big so it's bigger than the head of the screw so I'm going to attempt to fix that and I'll show you how I do it in a second Okay, so I would have shown this whilst I was doing it, but it is a very tight space. But basically, what I've done is taken the screw to, taken the screw out, got a washer, put the washer on the screw, and then just put the screw back in. And the washer is basically just stopping the screw head from going through that hole. And that's it. Really simple fix. And before you go any further with your flip after doing something like that, Put your drawer in both of them and make sure everything still fits and moves the way it should because you don't want to have to go finishing your piece and getting it looking all nice and then having to go back in and make massive alterations because you know it's not working properly so check all of that stuff early Look at that. Just so you guys know, I showed that part to my husband and he rolled his eyes at me. Alright, well, now that I know I can take this off, I'm gonna just take this whole back piece off. This was just me seeing if I could actually get it off without damaging everything completely. But I don't wanna keep this part. Oh, that one stayed intact. Oh, I had nails in it. 
<laughs> Might keep that and put it aside in my collection of stuff that will probably never get used. Once everything was super, super clean, I went in and scuff sanded everything. I went a bit heavier on the scuff sanding this time because it was super glossy. On the top, I went down a bit further just to make sure that everything was even because of where I took the plinth off. I think that's what it's called. Same in this spot here and the rest of it, I just scuff sanded and anywhere I couldn't get with the electric sander, I went in with a sanding block and 120 grit sandpaper. Okay, now, as some of you will know, I started making polymer clay earrings recently, getting all girly and stuff. And Nicola from Nick to the Knack, uh, she is a furniture paint stockist down in insert place here. <laughs> Um, and she wanted some of the earrings and I was like, they're my first lot, they're probably not very good, um, so you can have them for free and she was like, no, 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 I'll give you some paint. I do like paint. So, Nicola stocks Purico products and what she sent me is Purico lead in the silk finish paint. So this one has a built-in top coat. So that's lead. And she sent me Whisper in their stain and glaze. And the base and blocker. And this one is obviously the gray one. So this one is a one-step tannin blocker and primer. I haven't used this before so I'm excited to try that out and she also sent me a little touch-up brush and a, that's probably gonna be really loud um, a Kiriko applicator sponge look at that green I love green um, so what I'm going to be using on this piece I'm not going to be using the stain on this one because I'm going to be painting the whole piece but I am going to be using the primer and I'm going to be using lead. The other thing is, so the other thing is Cherie from Reimagined, I should remember that because we discussed it. Um, yeah, Cherie from Reimagined is a fellow furniture flipper and she visited me again the other day and, <coughs> sorry, um, she brought me some paints. I'll show you the one she brought me. So she brought me a tin of flip paints from Flip Style Paints in the colour Billy. So I'll be trying that out at some point, but not today. And she also brought this with her. Um, she works at Bunnings and these are available at Bunnings and she brought me this to try out so this is Monarch brand I almost said blend um, and chalk paintbrush so I'm gonna try that one out on this piece so exciting things okay so I'm not using my new brush for the primer because I want to save that for the actual paint itself so I'm using a UniPro chalk brush uh, straight off the bat with this primer, the first thing I noticed is the opacity is really good, so the coverage is good. Um, I only needed to do one coat over all of this. Where There were a couple of spots where I went over it again whilst I was working on it because it's so dry and warm right now that everything's drying really fast. But overall, just one coat and it was done. Um, it's nice and thick, but it goes on really easy, and because of how thick it is, there's no dripping or running or anything like that. Um, there's no strong smells and it dries with a nice smooth kind of chalky finish so I have a feeling the paint will adhere really well. I also did a scratch test once I was done and once it was dry and that thing wasn't budging. I couldn't use my nails because I don't have nails so I used a wire brush and it was just not coming off. These little painters pyramids 
were purchased for me by Angela and I will link those in the description because they are super handy. As I said previously, it was a really warm and dry day this day, so I grabbed my misting bottle and gave the surface a little bit of a spray so that I wouldn't end up with drag because the paint was drying really fast. Two weeks later. Okay, so I'm back after two weeks off and as you can see, there is an addition. Um, for those who haven't seen it before, I was planning on doing a bigger reveal than this, but um, if you're not new here, you would have seen it over on my Instagram and Facebook and TikTok. And I did also post a YouTube short showing it off. Um, so happy with it like so so happy with it um if you're in the ipswich or brisbane area go check out ink imagination i think i said somewhere else that it's on liverpool street in ipswich but it's actually limestone street uh just up from the cop shop um tj did mine but everyone there is absolutely lovely like really really nice people really great place and i'm already booked in for another one <laughs> um but anyway i digress uh, so I did have grand plans for this piece and was going to do something really detailed and I'll turn you around and show you but uh, basically I've run out of time on this I've had two weeks off the first week I wasn't intending to have off but I ended up violently ill and had no choice but to take the week off then the second week I had planned to take off had this done and then took the rest of the week off to make sure I didn't get it covered in sawdust and get it all dirty and stuff um, and so I've well and truly run out of time on getting this one done so I'm going to turn you around and show you. Ugh. Okay so as you can see the plan was to do cross stitch and it's come up really really good and I'm super happy with it. Um, I'll give you a quick rundown of what I did. So I used baking paper or what others probably call parchment paper to do the grid grid lines on it the grid lines are super rough and chonky but um, yeah I was going for what was quickest and I did four crosses per square as you can see um, I didn't use a paintbrush I used a toothpick a plastic toothpick to do my crosses because it gave me more control than using a brush um, this is all my colors I mixed some of these have dried out whilst I've had the two weeks off so I'm not I don't want to have to remix the colors and try and match them up again um, and like I said I just don't have the time to put into getting this done properly into a standard that I'd want it to be done so I will do something like this again some other time when I have the time to put into it but for now this is going to get smooth sanded because it's got a little bit of texture to it it's going to get smooth sanded and i'll repaint this so bye bye so for the sake of time i could have just repainted the entire piece and just left it at that but i can't just do that so i went with some stripes on the sides
Okay, so I'm going to, I've got, I think it's three coats of this pink on the stripes. Um, I can't tell you exactly what colour it is, but the bulk of the colour, because I mixed it, is Roller Skate Pink by Mint by Michelle. So it's pretty close. It's not as bright because there's other colours mixed in with it, but it's close. Um, and the colour I'm using to blend with it is another custom colour I've mixed. It's like a really, really, really dark plum colour. So this isn't going to take long, but I'll just a quick rundown of how I blend. I'm pretty sure a lot of people do it the same way. So I've got a brush for my plum and I've got the brush that I've used for this pink. And then I've got a go-between brush, which I'll be using for the blending. So I'm going to be putting a transfer up the top corner. So I'm going to do my blending down along here and it'll be kind of curved. So I'm going to start by putting my plum on and put it down the bottom here. I'm going to do two coats of blending, like two layers. So I'll start by putting this on. And then you get the pink and slap some of that on along that same curve. Kind of blend it as you go up so you don't have a definitive line between the coats, if you know what I mean. If not, I'm terribly sorry. Um, and then I've got my misting bottle and I'll do a quick mist along that line. And then I'll grab my go-between brush and blend that line. Now the first layer is going to look like crap, which is why it's the first layer. So once that dries, we'll go in with a second layer. Alright, now that I've got that looking all pretty, I'm going to be using Krylon Shortcuts in the colour Rose Gold. Um, I've had this for ages, I got it from Capriol Creative, but they no longer stock it, so if you're in Australia, I am not entirely sure where you'd be able to get it from, but there are other metallic sprays out there, I think, I don't know. Let's hope I don't stuff this up. Um, Transfers I'm using are uh, Dreamy Florals by Redesign with Prima. Um, I only have a couple pieces left over from a previous project, so I'm making do with what I have.
have, but because I put transfers on over the top, they do need to be sealed in, so I've gone over with two coats of Cartamelli clear coat. Now if I look weird here, like leaning into it and with a, you know, really goofy expression on my face, it's because I'm leaning in towards it so that the sunlight is hitting that surface so I can see where I've rolled the clear coat on and so that I can check for any thing that needs to be touched up. Alright, I'm sorry if the fan is really loud, I'm not turning it off, it's too... It's too bloody hot. <laughs> Wait, can I say bloody? The handles, I was originally planning on leaving them like this and just polishing them up and having them be all shiny and stuff. Um, but I, no. They need to be colourful. This is a colourful piece, it needs some colour on the front. So I've cleaned them, given them a good scrub with a wire brush and some Cuts Millie Clean Cut, and um, cleaned them off again just with straight water to get rid of any residue that might be there from the cleaner. And I've done one with. Where is it? I've said it a million times. Carter Millie Primer and Adhesive Bond. Now that they're both primed, I'm using a little stenciling brush just to brush on my pink concoction. Then I took my plum mix and brushed that on over the top, getting into all the little spaces, and then immediately rubbed it off with a rag. It felt a little too dull now so I grabbed my pink brush again and dry brushed some of that pink back onto the surface. Alright, quick little reminder of what she looked like before and here she is now. Right, well, that's it guys. I'm all sweaty because I've just been to pick up my son from school. Um, that's it for this one. It didn't quite go to plan, but super happy with how it turned out. Couldn't be happier. It was kismet, meant to happen. Um, don't forget to check the description for products used as well as my Amazon wish list and my buy me a coffee link and anything else related to this video. Um, yeah. Alright. Thanks for watching and I will see you next time.